I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you've tuned in today. Honey, this is the Christmas weekend week. before this Christmas. Is going, this is Christmas week. It is. I'll tell you what, it's an exciting time. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and you've got grandboys that are wanting because on the 24th, this is our Christmas tradition, yeah, right? Yeah. You, you want to tell them about it or you want me to tell them about it? You can start and I'll okay. help you out. <laughs> our, our Christmas con uh, tradition is the whole family comes over after we have our carols, candlelight, and communion on uh, Christmas Eve. We, it starts about five, I think. And then we go over to the house and she, these, these boys, we got, we got five grandsons, you know. And they eat a lot. Yeah, 24, 21, 18, 17, and 14. Yes. And they, they all like Nana's chicken and dumplings. That's right. And how much and do you make? I make 18 quarts. Now, I will have to say, as my mom would say, I make the dumplings from scratch. Right. I do not use biscuits or anything, and it takes a while to do this. Well, but and of course, you, we got Craig and me and, yes. and Don, the son. And all, we, we all, all like eat. it too. <laughs> yes. And then, not only do I fix Christmas Eve, but then we have a full spread on Christmas Day, turkey yeah. dressing, and of course, the kids like my chocolate pie. Oh yeah, your chocolate pies. Everybody wants your chocolate pie. All the, in fact, <laughs> you're having to make one pie for Cameron and Craig, and they, 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 they eat a whole pie. <laughs> and then I make pecan pies, and I make pumpkin pie, and. It's one time that I just spend the whole time cooking. Well, I carve the turkey now. You do. I do a good job carving the turkey. Yes, and I will tell you what else you do. You help to clean the kitchen. Oh, yeah. You are the dishwasher. <laughs> oh, pots and pan washer. Pots and pan No, not, the, not the dishes. Y'all, the ladies take yeah, care of that. Yeah, we do the every... dishes, but you do the pots and, and, and pans. Then, and then besides the family, we have several different people that, yes. that don't have family that we invite over for Christmas at our at our place. That's right. I, I do the pots and pans. You do That's the pots what and I, pans. I, that was what I did on KP in the Army. The yes. first uh, first time I went on KP, the old sergeant, I, he looked at me. And of course, I was I was already 23 when I went in the Army. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he said, come on back here. And I said, yeah, okay. And he said, here. And it was by his office. He said, here, you, you work here. The, it's called the pots and pans place. Uh -huh. And so he would always get me there when I did that. And then it paid off too when we went on bivouac. They all had to go out there and he talked to the lieutenant and I got to stay back and sleep in the barracks and help help him oh, wow. get all the food ready and take it out to the field and feed them and bring it back. That's so right. I didn't have to stay. I spent one night out there, that's all. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, you've heard about our Christmas, yes. but the most important thing about Christmas is honoring the birth of our Lord and Jesus Savior, Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, or actually, you might say, you know, people are looking for the Messiah. Yes. And. Uh, it, God wants to move among his people, but he can't move if, if humanity does not recognize yes. who Christ is. That's right. And so let's go right now where I'm talking about the Messiah, Jesus, the answer to the world's problems today. People are looking for the Messiah. Man reached down or maybe I should say look down the annals of time, trying to catch a glimpse of a redeemer. In the Old Testament, they were always looking forward and they held on to the hope of a coming Messiah. Actually, the prophets prophesied of it. They, they foretold the coming of the Messiah and that he would come to deliver people. 
Isaiah said it this way in Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will, be up, government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Here the prophet Isaiah spoke of the coming Messiah. But he didn't come the way people of that day expected him to come. He came in a very unexpected way. Actually, his arrival was unrecognized by a lot of people. You know, they weren't looking for a baby. How in the world can a child help them? They were looking for someone that had the resources and the power to set up a kingdom and deliver them. They were looking for a king. They were looking for a mediator between man and God. They were looking for a redeemer to redeem them. They were looking for a deliverer to set them free. They were looking for a savior who could save them. The truth is, when you all stop and boil it all down, what looked insignificant to man becomes all sufficient in the hands of God. What looks insufficient to you when you put it into the hands of God, it becomes all sufficient. No matter where you are, or what your problem is, or what you're facing. You know, many people read the Word of God with a closed mind. You need to read the Word of God with an open mind so that you see exactly what God is saying about this Messiah that he sent to mankind. He is the anointed one. And you will hear this scripture read many times during this season of the year. Luke 2, 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before him, them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For it is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts singing, sing, singing hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the, in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. The heavenly choir announced to the shepherds, but I was thinking about that. Was there anybody else out there that could have heard the angels singing? You ever thought about that? Maybe I think about stuff that other people don't. I don't know. But it seems logical to me that there could have been other people besides the shepherds there. Because it said, and suddenly with the angel, a multitude of heavenly host. Well, a multitude is a bunch. That's how we'd say it where I come from. It's more than 12. When I hear the word multitude, I think of thousands. What about you? Anybody that? Right? Now, I am sure if there was that many people that 
many angels that were singing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men, I'm sure it was echoing all across the countryside. So I, I'm just wondering if other people heard it. If they did, the shepherds was the only one that paid any attention to it. Maybe they had been, maybe they had just been sitting there talking with one another about the coming Messiah because every Jewish boy was taught Isaiah and the other books, but especially Isaiah. If you notice, when Jesus went into the temple to read, he read from Isaiah. It seems that as we look in the Bible, it seems that they seem to go back to the prophet Isaiah more than any of the others, as we see. Israel and the people of God had been searching for a Messiah, one to deliver them. They were looking for the anointed one, somebody that would have the supernatural powers of their God, that they had been told the stories that had been passed down from father to grandfather, uh, from grandfather to father, and all the way down, all the way back. They passed these stories down when they had the Passover supper of how the power of God delivered them. That's what they were looking for. Some, every time they had the Passover, it was a reminder of them that how God had delivered them from Egypt. And now they're under the tyranny and the tyrannical rule of the Romans. And they're looking for somebody to come because they heard of the power of their God, their Jehovah. They're looking for him to send a, a Messiah that would deliver them from their oppressors. They were looking for the Messiah. But instead of that, a child was born in a stable, unrecognized, overlooked, mostly unknown. From all outward appearances, what can this kid do? They couldn't see that he was the anointed one, the savior of the world. They couldn't see that he was the one that the prophets of the Old Testament had prophesied about. Now, before we condemn them, let's think about this for a minute. If you had been living in that day, would you have been able to recognize the babe lying in a manger in Bethlehem as the Messiah, the deliverer? Come on now. Don't shut down on me. You see, they were people that, and human beings just like we are, thinking like we are. And so many times, because we look for the spectacular and we miss the supernatural. I've heard my dad say that many, many, many times. The Messiah came, but he was not received by everyone. Only a few. We go on there in Luke 4. Look in, in the six, Luke 4, 6. We go look in Luke 4, 16. So it came. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. 
And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue and on the Sabbath day he stood up to read. And when he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Right there, he is reading about himself and he's telling them that everything they are looking for he is. In fact, he went on to say in the 21st verse, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He and I, if we want to say it in our language, he stood, he stood there in the temple, read from Isaiah, and then he said, in essence, he said, you've been looking for a Messiah, here I am. He was announcing he was the Messiah, the anointed one. He didn't make his appearance the way normally important, famous people do. His, his coming was not accompanied with all the pomp and ceremony. He did not appear with great fanfare like people do. He didn't come at the high point of a great marketing plan. But he came at the appointed time the way God planned it. Galatians 4, 4 says, and when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth this son born of a woman, born under the law. The people were going by what they saw in the natural and they did not recognize Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah. Actually, when he made this statement and he said, I am he, I am the Messiah, I am the anointed one, they got so irate. If you read on in verse 28 of four, Luke 4, so all those in the synagogue when they heard these things were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and they led him to the brow of a hill on which the city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through their midst of them, he went away. He told them, I am the Messiah, I have come. And they said, we don't believe it. In fact, they got so irate, they wanted to kill him. Jesus the Messiah, the anointed one. Later in his life, stood and overlooked the city of Jerusalem. And I guess maybe he was remembering, reading in the synagogue and identifying himself as the Messiah, the anointed one, the one that had come to deliver them There in Luke 19, 41. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you especially in this day, the things that make for your peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. He wept over the city. And he went on to say, because you rejected the Messiah, there won't be one stone left upon another. And if you'll go read 
history. You'll find out that they were overthrown and the city of Jerusalem was destroyed until it was an unrecognizable as a city. And the people were taken into captivity. One reason they didn't look, recognize him is because they were not looking in the right way. They weren't looking from a spiritual standpoint. They were looking in the natural standpoint for a deliverer. But Christ didn't come that way. He will come that way at what we call the rapture when he comes and he catches us away. That's when he'll come that way. But he came this way, the way he came, to deliver men from the rule of sin and Satan. This is the hour to shout it from the housetop. Messiah was born. Messiah lived. Messiah died. Messiah rose from the dead. And we are free today because Messiah saved us. Messiah heals us. Messiah will deliver us. Messiah will provide for us. You know, it's so important that we remember the reason for the season. So many times, you know, especially I think as ladies, we get so involved in doing all the necessary things to prepare for, for Christmas and for the celebration of Christmas that uh, sometimes we don't really enjoy the reason for the season. And so I think that it's so important for us just to step back and realize that we don't have to do everything that we want to do or that w is expected of us, but we just need to take time to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Right. And I know that Sometimes this can be a time, it's a joyous time for some families. Other families, um, I remember when both of us um, lost, we lost our fathers uh, shortly before a Christmas time. And that Christmas was really kind of hard for us because it was the first time that we did not have the whole family there. Yeah. And you may be there and you may be experiencing that same thing, but know that Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there yeah, to comfort, to comfort you, you to, to strengthen you. you, and to help you through this holiday season. Yes, yes. And you know, you heard uh, you heard me say at the beginning that we invite some people that don't have family to. And you know, I want to encourage you if you know somebody that doesn't have family, or uh, have them come over and celebrate yes. with you. With you, uh, that's what Christmas is actually all about: giving. God gave his son so that we could have everlasting life. And it's a time of giving. That's right. And, and give of, uh, I just want to encourage everybody to get involved. And you know, honey, not only a time of giving, but a time of forgiving. Yes. You know, so many times there are uh, families in the family feud almost. Right. Uh, this is a time to forget that. Forgive those, that, those family members that maybe have done hurtful things to you, but forgive them and let the love of Jesus just do a, a different something in your heart that will change your heart. Amen. Amen. Well, well, hey, listen, a month from now, we're going to start our Living Faith Crusade for right. 2019. Yes. And uh, we're going to let the announcer tell you about it, where we're going to be. We want to invite you to come and join us and be with us. That's right. And Rainbow Bible Training College Spring Start, it's, Enrollment. It's starting That's January, right, the January the 11th. That's right, 11th. You can go to rbtc.org yes. and get all the information. Enroll and actually 
That's right. And fill out applications, so forth and so on. Okay. That's right. right. And you know, if you live in the Oklahoma City area, we have Rainbow Bible Church there in Oklahoma City, 8921 Northwest Expressway. We have service on Sunday night. It is live. We are there live. Right. If we're not there, our son Craig is there. Yeah. So if you're in that area, come and visit us. Experience Sunday morning on Sunday night. Now you say, well, you don't have Sunday morning. No, we have Sunday morning on Sunday night. That's right. They started Saturday night, so you could be off all day Sunday. So why not just be off, uh, you know, come and enjoy, be off a weekend, come Sunday night. That's right. And we are there. That's right. All right. We invite you to come be with us. Listen, we have our offer uh, of my book, Listen to Your Heart, Hearing God in a Noisy World. Yes. And then Dad's Doing the Works of Jesus series, four CDs, and then the little book in Him. That's right. The, is, this is a great offer. So I encourage you to go to your, right now, and, and order that. Or go to your computer. It's We're offering it for twenty three thirty five. The normal price is thirty eight ninety. That's a fifteen dollars and fifty five cents saving. So take advantage of that. That's all right. right. Well, we want to say Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and thank you so much for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. If we're going to do the works that Jesus did, we better find out how he did them then, huh? Doing the Works of Jesus, a powerful four CD series by Kenneth E. Hagan. In the book, Listen to Your Heart, Kenneth W. Hagan explains how to tell the difference between your heart, your mind, and your senses, and learn how to listen to your heart. Plus the mini book, In Him by Kenneth E. Hagan. Learn who you are and what you have in Christ. The books and CDs can be yours today for only $23.35 by calling toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or just log on anytime at rhema.org, day or night. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.